Good morning, deeply loved children of God. How are you today? Well, I am doing well, thank you for asking. Well, I am Pastor Maureen Howard of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa, and I welcome you to Storytime with Pastor Maureen. Have, if you live in the Washington, Iowa area, did you look at I'm sorry, once again, I got a text. So my apologies. So my, my question is, have you looked out your windows yet? Yes, what a surprise! In the Washington area, we have two inches at least of snow on the ground. What a surprise that is! <laughs> What a joke uh, uh, the, the Mother Nature is having on us. It's springtime and we've got snow. Well, it is good to be together in a warm place where we can read the Bible together. So we are reading today from the Spark Storybook uh, Bible. It is published by Augsburg Fortress in Minneapolis. And the story that we're on today is called The Great commission. So are you ready to hear this story? All right, get all snuggly. I'm in my rocking chair and I'm ready to go. So let's go. Jesus went to see the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. They buzzed with excitement. Is that you, Jesus? We're so glad to see you. Do you want something to eat? Jesus smiled. Peace be with you, he said. I have things to tell you. The disciples gathered around close around Jesus, eager to listen to him. Jesus began. God has given me all the power in heaven and earth. The disciples looked at each other and began chattering. Wow! Wonderful! We knew it! Fantastic! What do you do first? Wait, Jesus said. There's more. The disciples listened carefully. Go everywhere in the world and teach people about me. And remember, I will always be with you. Jesus returned to heaven. The happy disciples soon began to work Jesus, do the work Jesus had told them to do. And that's the end of the story. And here we have Jesus in the middle here. And all his disciples are around him. And can you see their smiling faces? They're so excited to see Jesus and to learn about him. And let me pull back the book a little bit. Can you find squiggles? Remember the caterpillar that we're supposed to look for in each of the pages? Can you find him? Yeah, there he is, right there. And so that's the story of the Great Commission given to Jesus. We are told that we are to go baptize and tell everyone about how much Jesus loves them. How are you doing in this social distancing? Are you getting lonely for your friends? I know I am. I'm all alone in the church, and it's really, really, really quiet, and I'm not used to that. I want to hug people and say welcome and tell them that Jesus loves them, but we're keeping our social distance, and so that's really, really very hard. But at my home and at the church, we have hearts on our windows to let people know as they walk by or as they drive by that we love them and that they are loved. But the church and my house is lonely. There's not a lot of people coming and going because 
we're so far apart from each other. So how are you doing with being by yourselves and not getting to play with your friends? Are you doing okay? Oh, I hope you are. Did you hear the one phrase that I said in the story today? That Jesus sends us out to tell everybody how much Jesus loves us and how much God through Jesus has done for us. But Jesus then says, do that because I am with you always. Not just at the morning breakfast when we say maybe grace or at lunch or at supper when we say grace. Yes, Jesus is there too, but that's not the only time. Jesus is in our homes right now with you. So even though I am the only one at church, I know I'm not alone because Jesus is with me. And so I can talk to Jesus every minute of the day. And I know that he's by my side, keeping me company. And so I want you to remember that even though we might be getting lonely, that we might be getting sad because we can't see our friends and go outside to the playgrounds and play, know that you're not alone. Jesus is with you always. And what great news is that? And do you know why Jesus is with you always? is because Jesus loves you. He loves you very much and you are enough. You don't have to work even harder for Jesus to love you. No, Jesus loves you right now, just as you are. And you might be in your pajamas still. You might not even have had breakfast yet. And Jesus loves you very, very much. You may be getting ready to go outside and play in the little bit of snow that we got. Jesus loves you as you're getting your snow boots on. Jesus loves you always and forever. And so Sabrina and Kelsey and Angel and Chloe and Molly, Jesus loves you right now. And Jesus says, you are perfect in my sight. And Lydia and Nico and Lily and Blake, Jesus looks at you and says, I'm by your side. It's okay. I'm with you. And Elizabeth and Mercedes and Drew and Trey and Garrett and Abe and Lori and Taylor, God says to you, you are precious. And if you're getting lonely because we have to be separated from each other, know that I am with you. So beloved children of God, Jesus loves you. And so let's on the count of three, remind each other that Jesus loves us by saying, Jesus loves me on the count of three. You ready? One, two, Three, Jesus loves me. And yes, he does. And so, children of God, you are treasured. You are worthy. You are enough. And Jesus loves you. So you have a marvelous day today, knowing that you're not alone. Jesus is with you and that Jesus loves you. I'll see you tomorrow, children of God. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.